Hi there guys, welcome back to the shop. Today for episode seven on the high voltage series where we're going to teach you how to make a basic little grounding wand. Now, this is a common thing that you'll see in any kind of big power environment. You'll see these inside transmitters. Every transmitter cabinet in the world has one of these inside it. The proper term for it is a grounding wand. It is not a hot stick. A hot stick is an insulated pole that you use to manipulate objects or you have a tool on the end. They get really expensive and they're really fun to play with. A grounding wand is a stick with a grounded lead, a wire, and usually a hook, sometimes a little pokey stick on the end, but usually it's a hook. They're also referred to quite frequently in the industry as a Jesus stick, because when you're using it, you've got your, your ground lead off somewhere and you poke it and whatever you hit is probably gonna spit and spark and scare the hell out of you. So people just, Jesus, and just, yeah. Um, it's also called a Jesus stick because if you don't use one, you're gonna get to meet him. Um, we're going to call it a grounding wand or grounding electrode. And this is just one I threw together a few weeks ago in rehearsal setup. This one sucks and I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna show you how to make it way better. So we're gonna, there's a lot of leeway in how you do this. There's, there's a lot of fungibility. I'm gonna try and show you how I'm gonna build a really nice one with just simple, cheap home materials. And you can, uh, uh, I'll make a point of saying, okay, this is an important part. This, this, this aspect matters, but how you interpret it is your art. So what works for you is fine. I trust you. Just, you know, understand the bigger picture. The details are left to your own devices. So what we're gonna start with, there is, you need an insulating stick. I have used a drumstick, a, a standard 5A drumstick works great, but drumsticks are made out of wood and that'll absorb moisture and then it'll conduct. One of the big things to realize as you start working with high voltage is that things that are insulators aren't always as the voltage goes up. Dielectric breakdown is a thing. So what we're gonna use, this is super cheap, works very well. I've been using it for, for weeks down here and this is my first try with this particular material. Um, it's a piece of PEX tubing. This particular tubing is 3 8 inch PEX, which is kind of oddball. Usually you go to the big box store and you see uh, half inch and three quarter and one inch. Like that's all, like you go to a plumbing supply place, they'll have all kinds of stuff. But at the big box stores, you're gonna find half, three quarter inch. Outside of that, you never know. I found, individual sticks for just a couple bucks of three eighths, which is super cool. It's very bendy because it's PEX. Like this is nowhere near as rigid as PVC pipe. And you can use PVC pipe, but this is more impact resistance than PVC pipe. Like if you took a PVC pipe like this and went, you're, it's gonna shatter. Whereas this stuff, it just, it doesn't care. It's cool. So we're gonna start by making a piece of this. I'm gonna say 18 inches long. That's, that's the length I'm going for. This is a non-critical dimension, but about 18 inches. Anything shorter than that is gonna get you a little too close to the action because your stick isn't as long as you think it is. We'll cover that. And anything longer than that is gonna be all flopping around. And when you're actually using it, it's gonna end up sticking out behind you like that. And that's dangerous. You don't want that. So, so 18 inches got a little bend in it. It happens. Um, probably because I smashed it on the table. But yeah, I'm gonna say 18 inches to start out with. So we're gonna, yeah, hey, that's pretty good. Okay. So to that, you need a wire. Now this is fungible, but it does matter long term. If you're just throwing together a quick thing, you need to, you know, safe out a bunch of capacitors for storage or something, use whatever the hell you find. But this, this wire here is THHN. This is common standard stranded house wire. This, this is what my whole house is wired with. Just 12 gauge THHN stranded, which is fine. This is great wire. It's good for 20 amps in a conduit all day long for 20 years, just fine. But it does that. Okay, here, let me. Okay, THHN. And, and I can wiggle that 
and it just stays there. Okay, I got like a foot of wire hanging out there. This is the absolute cheapest that money can buy. Um, this is BN Tech Go is the brand, 16 gauge, black, silicone insulated wire. This is still uh, copper wire. Check, if you're buying wire on Amazon, there's a lot of places that sell aluminum wire. Ew! We, we don't like aluminum wire. There's, there's a time and a place for aluminum wire. Yes, okay. But for what we do at this scale, you don't need to buy a lot of wire. Buy the good stuff. Don't don't buy that crappy aluminum stuff. Get proper copper wire. So this is proper copper wire with a silicone insulation and very fine strands. The, the number of strands in this wire is probably five, and this is a smaller wire, is probably five times as many as the strand count in this wire. So these strands are big, thick, fat strands. These strands are really tiny and silicone insulation is soft. So if I pull some off of here and hold that out about a foot, same as the other one, and I let go, it does that. This is super floppity, which is exactly what you want in a test lead or a ground lead. If, you're, if, if you go and buy a pair of nice fluke test leads, they're gonna be silicone insulated with a really high strand count of super fine strands. So. We're gonna take, and for this application, for what we're doing here, we're gonna make, I'm gonna say that's two feet. Let's go three feet. Okay, yeah, three feet's good. Yeah. Also, if you ever need just a rough measurement of about three feet, it's your arm-ish, okay? So just, eh, eh, it's about three feet, okay? I'm gonna cut this. about ish and then we'll coil this up and set this aside so now you've got your wire and the next step is we need to figure out how to turn this into a lead like we want to be able to do things off the end of it and if we just use this it's going to melt if you're arcing this out to stuff you'll melt the end off so we want to have some kind of electrical attachment now this is where you're really open to a million different potential things. What I'm gonna do, hmm, because you can use a drill bit. I, I was looking, I was looking at this earlier. I've got this little magic wand thing. I think it's a chopstick actually, but it's like a stainless chopstick, which is kind of cool. And I might be able to use it. Ah. But I think for this one, I wanna go simple. I'm actually gonna use a piece of this THHN cable because it's really stiff. It'll give me a lot of attachment opportunities and it's disposable. Because the whole point here, this whole thing, this is not something that's gonna be an heirloom piece that you're gonna treasure for generations. This is, this is disposable. Also, I'm an idiot. I cut this off and I need this bare. If you need a bare piece of short wire, it's really hard to strip short wire. So, let me get my bag here real quick. One of these days I'm gonna do a video on my electrical tool bag and you guys are gonna love it. All right, so when you've got to strip long wire, these great strippers, if you have to strip a centimeter, if you have to strip something long, these are way better for that because you can grab it up in the middle of the wire and you're gonna have to work for it, but this will let you walk a big wad of insulation right down off the wire. All right, so we've got that stripped off of there. This is where I'm just gonna do one of those, like you, you read in academic pages, okay? It'll just be, Stripping the wire is just left as an exercise to the reader, and that's the physicist hand wave of just figure it out, kid, you're on your own. Because um, there's a million ways to skin that cat. But I now have a nice long bare piece of stranded copper wire, and we don't need this anymore. That Okay. So we're gonna strip this, and I'm gonna strip it long. I wanna have about 
give or take inch and a half. Now look at that. Now this is not aluminum wire. And it's easy to mistake it for such because you're like, oh look, that's copper wire and aluminum wire. No, this is tinned copper wire. God, that's really nice cable. For being the cheapest crap on Amazon, that's really nice cable. All right. So how do, oh, I know how we'll do that. Now I could be fancy and solder this, but I'm not. What I'm gonna do is do it cheap and simple. And we're gonna give it a twist and a heat shrink. And that for, for this application should be just fine. Trick is figuring out how tight and tiny we can get it. But we're just gonna twist and heat shrink this together. So can I fit that skinny piece of heat shrink down over this? No way, okay, we're going with the big stuff. So I'm going to just wrap this around on here. Like that. Now, if you were doing this for real, you'd solder that. And you should. And I can. Wait, let's, let's solder it. I'll feel better if I solder it. You don't really need to, but I'll feel better if we do. Let's, I'm trying to teach you guys quality. So let's, let's do it for serious. Yes, I fell victim to my own perfectionistic instincts. Instead of just hacking this together, we're actually going to solder it and make it pretty. So I grabbed a soldering iron. And I grabbed a little flux. Pull the hairs out when you're using a new brush. Wow, that gets warm quick. Whoo, yeah, it's gonna be a good day. Okay, so we're gonna put just a little dab of flux on here. Now you don't have to solder yours because it's kind of a pain and I get that, but if you can, it's a really good idea. Okay, that is in there and good. Now we're gonna let that cool down for a second. Okay, now we're gonna get the heat shrink gun out. It's still a little warm, but it'll be all right. You wanna keep these Let's check that. Yep, nothing's going to instantly sear off flesh. And we wanna keep this nice and straight and clean because we're gonna put a big piece of heat shrink right over the top of that. So I'm gonna grab this piece of heat shrink and put that right down over the thing. And you want the smallest piece of heat shrink that'll fit over whatever giant glob of solder you put on there. And then I'm gonna slide this down to where it just covers the solder. You want a fair bit of this sticking out. And the big thing is to protect the solder joint wire junction. So we're right right about in the middle, so that's good. And then we'll, holding onto this end, we'll fire up our heat gun and we'll heat shrink that. There's that side, and then we'll flip it over and do this side. Oh, that's beautiful. All right, see? This is why I like heat shrink. Like, I, I am not the prettiest solder skill set that you're ever gonna see on the internet. I can solder. I'm actually good at it, but I'm not, not pretty at it. But this'll do. So on the other end, we're just going to put a ring terminal also with a little bit of heat shrink because 
we want this to be super protected. So that'll be my inside piece and that'll be my outside piece. So watch this because there's gonna be layers to this. This is gonna be cool. All right, so I have my wire, my terminal, my outside piece, and my inside piece. And of course, they're all in matching black because black goes with everything. So I'm gonna put the big piece of heat shrink, or the, the little piece of heat shrink on the wire, and that just barely fits over the wire. That's, that's a really small piece of heat shrink. And then I'm gonna run the big piece of heat shrink up the wire, past it. So that's, that's way up here, so you, you can barely see that. But there's the thin piece, the fat piece, and then we'll clean up our any bent leads or flyers. And then we'll put this on there and we're gonna make sure that this goes in nice and clean and all the way down to the end. Push that in there pretty good, which is a little more difficult with this wire than the other stuff we were working with because this is a really fine, delicate wire. We're gonna grab our Klein 3005 CRs and set this up. Make sure we're only crimping the metal part because crimping the vinyl won't do you any good. Are these even vinyl anymore? I don't think the heat shrink ones are actually made of vinyl. I'm not sure. Comment in and teach me. All right, so that's all crimped down. We give it a tug test. Boop, boop, there. Now we're gonna run the skinny heat shrink down in there down inside all the way up to the end. And when we shrink this, this is going to grab down on the heat shrink. This heat shrink's gonna grab on the wire. And instead of just grabbing this little one centimeter of wire, we've got it all the way back to here. So fire up our heat. Give it a slow rotisserie until everything's cooked to a golden brown. Or as is usual with my cooking, black. Okay, so that is beautiful. And that's heated all the way down. So now we've got our terminal out on the end and we've got a good bit of heat shrink here, so that's cool. And now we have to let this cool off for a minute because what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this all the way down, but you wanna wait a minute because if you do it too quick, this is at first, it isn't now, but at first it's hot enough where if you just slide this down over it, it'll activate the heat shrink and you don't want that. Now, this is not a fundamental requirement of making your grounding electrode, but it's a good practice. It's, it's a good idea because now as I shrink this down, I've created not just a really sturdy joint, like it's, it's electrically good. Electrical is easy. This is also mechanically good. And that's the thing a lot of people don't think about. And you'll see this a lot, especially at the hobbyist level. They'll make a thing that electrically works, but mechanically, not so much. So now we've built, that's, that's professional quality joint there. That's beautiful. And it's electrically secure, it's mechanically secure, and that'll last you for years. Like this is, this is a very over-engineered hot stick. So now I'm gonna take that and lay it up against there, and I'm gonna grab a big fat piece of heat shrink, and we've got our electrode, we've got our handle, and with just heat shrink, I'm gonna bring that right up and over, and it just a tight fit. Uh, slide that, slide the handle through. And I'm gonna slide this through and that might be too tight. I might not be able to do it like this. And if I can't, then we'll improvise something else because I don't have a ridiculous variety of heat shrink sizes. So I wanna have, I wanna have a lot of lead hanging out there, but I don't wanna have the wire lead out. I wanna have, the problem is I wanna have the fat part in the middle which makes us a bit bothersome, but will it stretch a little bit? Can we, can we just lean on it and cram it in there? I don't know. 
Let's find out because the worst thing that'll happen is I break something and I got to build it over again. And well, I like building stuff, but that is, that is super tight. Ah, oh, it's almost there. Come on. Ooh. Oh, oh, I got it. I got it. Okay, cool. And now I'm going to bring that, I'm going to actually pull it back in about a quarter inch. You can see that in there. Okay. And I've got my electric, the, the big bulge is right here for the solder. And then this comes out the top and that is beautiful. So let's shrink this and that'll give me a solid. Now you got to be careful. This is PEC. So you don't want to, you don't want to hang out there too long with all that heat. Just enough to shrink it down secure. Oh yeah. That is a grounding electrode to be proud of. That is an object to art. It's beautiful. Congratulations, you've now built a proper Jesus stick. That's nice, all in sexy black. Green is also acceptable because it's a grounding electrode. So black or green or green with the yellow stripe is, is the colors to go with. And that is really nice, look at that. I'm proud of that. This is not meant to last you forever. This is just for testing and probing. The first thing we're gonna do with this in the next video is I'm gonna teach you how to test your neon sign transformer. But to do that, you had to make a tool. This is a thing you're gonna experience a lot as we get more into this. Some stuff, yeah, you can buy the tools, you can buy these, but it's a lot more than it costs you to make one. And at this level for what you're doing, you can develop some skills and have an excuse to buy a couple cool tools and learn some stuff and make things. And that's what it's all about. So thank you for hanging out with me today, making cool stuff and putting it on the internet. You now have your very old grounding electrode. And if you've built one, please comment in, send me pictures. You can get in the Discord. Um, there's a link below in the description. Get in the Discord, post pictures of your grounding electrode because there's so many opportunities for different materials, different ideas, different stuff. The big thing is you wanna have a good insulator. You, so wood is okay, but plastic is better. Don't use black plastic. Black, this is really important. Black plastic usually uses carbon in it as the pigment to make it black. Carbon conducts electricity. So your, your thing that you think is an insulator will actually be a really terrible conductor, but it's good enough when there's 12,000 volts on the other end that you'll get a tingle. You don't want tingles, tingles are bad. So no black plastic, clear, white, totally cool. Gray, black, not so good. But yeah, be creative, explore it, show me what you got. You guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden, thank you for watching. And as always, I'll see you next time.